Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE, an unstoppable domain special showcase, Women of Web3 or WOW3. I'm super excited for this interview. We have three great guests, Sandy Carter, the SVP and Channel Chief of Unstoppable Domains, Narelle Bailey, Managing Director for the Entertainment, AKA Disco Leopard, that's her handle, NFT handle, we'll talk more about that. And Kristen Mirabella, Director of Business Development Gemini, all in the Web3 world here for Women of Web3. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, great for having here. us. Thanks. So what a great announcement, Sandy. What is the WOW3, Women of Web3, and why did you announce it on Stubble Domains Web3? Awesome, well, thanks, John. Um, so today we are so excited to announce Unstoppable Women of Web3. And one of the things that we noticed ourselves plus 60 plus companies is that we need more diversity in the Web3 space. So our mission is to make Web3 more accessible for everyone. Uh, to help women with that first step and be very action oriented. So we're going to launch education, networking and events um, as we move forward. And we're really excited to start today, March 8th. We've got a 24 hour Twitter space. Uh, we have a YouTube live. We're going to be auctioning it off some NFTs to donate to Girls in Tech, a not for profit who is also going to launch a mentoring platform for women in Web3. We'll also be announcing 100 inspirational women's in Web3. And I could take up the entire time talking about all we have in store to make Web3 accessible to everyone. That's awesome. We're going to unpack that. A lot of things to talk about there. I'm really looking forward to it. Narelle, you you got a great story here. What are the lazy lions and, and the queen, so to speak? And what are you guys doing? And tell us about your handle. Uh, God, that's a lot of questions there, John. <laughs> Where do we start with that? Um, so, I mean, I started my um, NFT journey about uh, six months ago only, and I got really lucky in entering into the space with the Lazy Lions to start with. And the kings and existing queens that were kind of in that space to begin um, were incredibly welcoming. I literally, like, I love being the person in the room that asked the dumb question. Because if I if I can ask it, then, you know, there's there's a hundred other people there that, that aren't asking that question. And so when I stepped into the, you know, the pride space with Twitter and Discord, getting to know the Lazy Lions before I even got into my first project, um, they were incredibly welcoming. Like any question that I asked, they had an answer for. And so, you know, why we're kind of partnering with Unstoppable and supporting that. Well, one, once we once through that space, I got introduced to Queen Sandy uh, as well. You know, she's part of the pride um, and, and one of the lazy lions. And again, yeah, it's that whole symbiotic relationship where you've got, um, you know, kings and queens, men and women kind of in the pride. But it's not just about men and women either. It's, it's the diversity aspect where it's people from all different cultures, backgrounds all around the world. And so, you know, getting in and learning and growing together in this brand new space that we're all part of creating. Um, and then Unstoppable is a huge part of that with the gateway to, to allowing people to kind of get into it to begin. So it just all made sense. Well, when it makes sense. We're, we're so, going to unpack right. that in, in a short minute. But Kristen, who, what's going on with Gemini and Web3? What's going on in the ecosystem there? How are you supporting the Women of Web3 initiative? Really excited. Gemini is an exchange and custodian. Um, we offer access to cryptocurrencies. We are your access point. We're the access point for women who are trying to embrace their own financial freedom and build their own story. Um, be economically empowered and interacting with Web3 in a way that's going to be increasingly necessary as, as this continues to build. Uh, Gemini is really excited to be able to provide a platform for education um, for anyone and especially women who are looking to build um, their knowledge base around what's happening in cryptocurrency. How can they interact with it? How can they make really good financial decisions as they look to interact with networks um, you know, within DeFi? What tokens do they want to be able to you know, purchase, move off of a centralized platform like Gemini's? Uh, we are very regulated. We're very secure. Um, as an access point to be able to interact with cryptocurrencies and use crypto to interact with this ecosystem that's growing. Uh, you can, you know, as a woman, decide on a really good idea on how you want to embrace that financial freedom of interacting with a protocol that might unlock your potential to uh, be more financially independent, make really good decisions about you know, the future of what your your family might need economically. Um, you know, and Gemini as an access point for that as far as crypto and other uh, digital assets go uh, is is where you know, we're really proud that we can uh, power that network. That's awesome. We got the Gemini, got the Lazy Lions, you got the Unstoppable. All three of you guys are in the middle of all the action. 
and it's super uh, game changing. It's also a cultural shift. Uh, you're seeing a lot of young, the young generation as well as senior experienced people coming in. Certainly technologists are coming in, business leaders are coming in. And it just feels like a whole nother cultural shift. So I have to ask you, what are you guys most excited for in this roadmap for Women of Web3? What's on your mind? What do you guys see? What's the vision? Well, I'll start first. You know, uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about is getting women to experience Web3. Um, not just book learn it, but really get in there and interact and play with it. So for example, John, uh, there is a game called Decentraland. They sell land and what they're going to help us do is to build a virtual Women of Web3 headquarters inside of the game. And as women go there, they're going to experience, you know, logging in. They're going to experience crypto like Kristen just talked about. They'll experience NFTs like Disco just talked about. And so it won't just be book smarts. So they'll be able to get in there and do and see and play, which I think is the best way to learn about Web3. For, for, for me, I'd say, I mean, honestly, I'm most excited about getting it started. There's been so much work kind of going into this to begin with. And uh, and this space is, is also new and constantly growing and, and kind of evolving, changing as we go, because we're pioneers kind of in this space, really, like we, we all of Web3. Um, and so getting it started and it continues to grow and evolve from there, which is, you know, a lot to do with kind of community driven initiatives, what's happening in the market and the space at the time as well. So super, get it started, build it, and it keeps growing from there. Kristen, what's your vision too? What, how do you see this evolving? What's, what do you hope for? And what are some of the things you're excited about? I couldn't agree more. Uh, what I think is really exciting is that, again, if you're looking to learn about this, um, you know, Sandy, you're so right. You're not going to, learn about really how to unlock the potential of this ecosystem by reading about it. You have to get in there, find crypto, come to Gemini's platform, open an account, understand what it means to buy cryptocurrency, buy Bitcoin, understand what you're comfortable with, use resources like our Cryptopedia to understand the differences between tokens, the differences between layers. Why would you buy this token and transfer it off of the platform where you're looking to interact with Web3? Maybe you're looking at these Web3 applications and you want to understand what generating income through one of these looks like. You really got to start with the basics, but start here, purchase something, move it off, you know, test it, use little, little amounts. You don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. I think that that's a common misconception with people who are really starting to get interested in the space, especially as they start to learn about cryptocurrency. Buy a tiny piece, you know, you don't need to sell the farm, uh, move it off the platform, learn a little bit about how you can interact, build a community around yourself. There are a lot of women who are learning how to do this and through NFTs and through other interests that you might naturally have, you can really embrace the technology and understand what it can do for you. You know, you, you mentioned that in the early days of Bitcoin, even Ethereum, giving it away was a big part of that kind of early days of community. And Earl, you mentioned the word pride as part of the lazy lions. Community is a big part of this. Sandy, you know this, you've seen communities develop. Uh, over the years, this new kind of community dynamic is a network effect, but it's also yeah. people centric. It's also about reputation. It's also about being open and collaborative. I mean, it sounds like a bunch of cliches jammed together, but this is kind of the world we're in uh, for Web3. Can you guys share your thoughts on that uh, and get a reaction to that? Yeah, and I just wanted to jump on kind of what Kristen was mentioning there as well, you know, like, and Sandy, like get in there, get started, like have a little taste, have a little try of this, watch, learn, and then kind of tying into your community aspect there, ask the questions, get into, and you know, the two, the couple of main spaces there are uh, Discord and Twitter, which, and again, I, I signed up my Twitter account in 2014 and I pretty much didn't touch it like from 2015 kind of onwards, like now learning and getting in and growing with this space, um, that's kind of where the mediums are to start with, uh, with it. So yeah, get in, get started and, um, and ask the questions along the way. Sandy, you, yeah, see, and you see Twitter and, and Discord as the primary? For yeah. Communication, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there, there's so many uh, Disco, right? Because, you know, I'm on, I'm now on Telegram. I'm on Discord, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Signal. I just got invited to Signal groups. So uh, this is one of the areas that we need to work on for Web3. I think all of us would agree is just that user interface 
a part of the reason that we're launching this is because it is hard today, right? Web3 is hard. And so there's multiple communications channels, um, you know, and that's why we love, you know, partners like Gemini who are making it easier and Lazy Lions who are setting up these communities. You know, when you buy an NFT, you're really not, I guess you are buying the NFT for value, but you're also buying into the community. Mm -hmm. um, Disco and I have been meeting actually every Saturday night for a while now with the rest of the queens planning out women of Web3. Kristen and Jim and I and I have been meeting together. It's about the people and the networking and the, the tribe that you're part of as well. You really nailed it on the community piece. You know, ever since we started talking about Unstoppable, I got to say, I've been wanting to get the Cube NFTs going because it is a community dynamic, but it's also, this got practical usage of this. There's data behind it. There's actually real, use cases. Can you guys share your thoughts on how you see um, the use cases being applied specifically to the world, but also to, to women of Web3 too? Who wants to go first? Yeah, <laughs> let's, we're also polite. We're also polite. Kristen, do you want to go first? You're one of our partners. We'll let you start us off. Yeah. Sure, sorry. Yeah, I didn't want to, I didn't want to jump in there if uh, anybody wanted to get started. Uh, real applications of, of what this looks like, I, I think goes back to an idea I had at the top of the call. As there's clarity, as that continues to emerge, as Web3 continues to build, and we understand what this really means. I think many would say that there's, you know, lack of clarity around what Web3 means. Maybe there are some platforms that are slightly more centralized than others. If we think of what Web3 in general represents, uh, you know, it's this idea of decentralization, empowering you through ownership of your data, empowering you through the ability to do things in a decentralized way that you're not able to do in Web2. And I think the real application of transition of where we are today into what this becomes is, you know, I think we keep nailing it on the head. You really have to get out there and practice. You have to understand what this transition means for you and what does it mean for what you're trying to achieve? So if my, you know, personal stance is, is really uh, solid in where, you know, your financial future is rooted. And if we're talking about cryptocurrency and your ability to interact with these networks, um, like we've been saying, you have to practice, you have to understand and learn what you're getting yourself into. But I also think there's this element of being okay with making mistakes, but you are talking about your financial future. You're talking about something that's, there are really high stakes around. Making mistakes means starting with really good partners. You can start with platforms like Gemini. You can start with platforms like Unstoppable Domains and know that the foundation has been laid for you to be able to test these grounds. I think that what this becomes and what is really important here is knowing that there are going to be a few centralized points that are your access to this Web3, to this broader ecosystem. But being able to trust that these platforms have security in mind, so the security first mindset that empowers you to then go be in charge of data privacy, being able to take charge of um, really what your interaction with the rest of this world means and being, being able to trust that the foundational layer that you're entering that world through is one that can be trusted. Um, I think that as we look at the real world application of this, finding that right starting point is really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would I would just add, um, John, to, to what uh, Kristen just said, um, there are also B2B use cases here. So we want to make sure that, you know, there's a lot of consumer work, but there's also B2B as well. So, you know, imagine you're in Decentraland or you're in Sandbox, a game. If you're a retailer or in a consumer business, you can place uh, your products or your portfolio inside of that game. There is now decentralized finance that's out there. How does that play a role in your company and the way that you're financing for your company, not just for yourself, like Kristen mentioned, but also for your company. And then DAOs, of course, mm -hmm. fractional ownership of different things. We're seeing you know, funding change, SPACs turning into DAOs, all of this. If you look at our 24 hour Twitter space, I'm, I, I can't wait. I'm, I think I'm gonna actually do a 24 hour a binge for myself because pull you're all nighter. Every time that's in college, come on, we got to do you pulling all nighter. Yeah, right. I, I know Disco will be with me, right? Disco. <laughs> I was going to say, last time I did that was New Year. Like, of course, we're doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, super exciting. I mean, WoW, WoW 3 could be a DAO. I mean, the vision here is really amazing. I am so impressed. I think this is a great thing because it could go anywhere. What do you guys see? A DAO in the future, um, merging communities and merging tribes together? How, how, you guys, have you guys talked about that? What's the, what's the thought process there? 
we actually did talk about doing a DAO. We decided to kick this off first and get everybody up to speed on what it was before we jumped into a DAO, which I think is pretty advanced and sophisticated. Um, and so, you know, part of what we also see is if you look at part of the membership, you'll see uh, women of blockchain, women of data, uh, BFF. I mean, all these women's groups coming together to unite as long with, along with a lot of major companies, Web2 companies, Google, Deloitte, Altair, um, with the who's who of Web3, you've got Gemini, you've got, you know, Consensus, you've got blockchain.com. So, you know, I love this because uh, we are coming together for a movement, not for individual companies, but to have an impact on the industry to really educate uh, women. And uh, John, I forgot one of the really cool things we're also announcing today is our first 100 inspirational women of Web3. In fact, Disco helped me come up with the name of that uh, because we do wanna highlight as examples, all of these great women uh, that are in the space so that we each can reach back and pull others forward. Okay, mm -hmm. now we got to get into the, um, the Disco Leopard. Let's put the lower third up there so we can see it uh, and the name. <laughs> That's, tell us about the story here and what does it mean to you? Take us through the thought process, the experience and, and how you envision this unfolding because it's an NFT, you have one. It's Yeah, that, yeah totally. That, that I guess, I mean, starting with, you know, so the Disco Leopard kind of, you know, piece to it as well, like in, in this new space, in the, in the Web3 space, first of all, you get to like come up with your own identity. So I got to pick Disco Leopard, like, who doesn't want to be a disco leopard? And, and so even just coming up with the journey of like, what is your identity with that? And then, you know, you go through that path of uh, being doxxed, meaning being revealed, people kind of know who you are or not, or keeping it, um, you know, kind of uh, a name on the side. That's all okay. Like it's all part of that whole decentralized space, which is super exciting. So just so you know, like the disco leopard means, you know, optimist, glass half full, um, you know, pessimist, glass half empty. And then the third piece to that was, Disco Leopard equals awesomest. And that's where I kind of saw it. And I'm like, that's me, 100%. Well, we just talked um, you because your lower third had your name next to it. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm all right with that. I don't mind at all. <laughs> um, so, you know, getting, getting into that to start with. And then, you know, when we were talking about partners and coming into this safe space as well, and yeah, absolutely, kind of technology-based partners infrastructure to make sure that we're, we're safe and we've got a smooth gateway kind of coming in. But I'm also going to put communities into partnerships as well, because there are so many NFT projects, you know, DeFi gaming projects, et cetera, finding your people, finding the community that resonates with you and it's different for everyone. And that's a beautiful thing, but you get to kind of find like-minded people um, and join in that. You know, I've been thinking this for about a long, long time and I thought I was just weird, but now that it's happening, you guys are in the middle of it. Your identity is so important now and you could have a community and a tribe to belong to, but yet traverse other tribes and move around, this is kind of the whole prospect of unstoppable, right? So Sandy, this is like a great future. You can be protected in a trusted tribe or, or community and then still move around to others and engage. And it's almost like a packet moving around a network. It's really about people too on, on the internet. This is a total complete game changer. It wasn't really, it's not really possible prior to this. Yeah, I mean, if you look at all the members, you can move from um, a metaverse you can move into gaming. You can go into DeFi. We've got NFT communities. And uh, and I love, you know, like you said, traversing those communities. Like we're going to do an auction and we've had donated NFTs. So Disco and Lazy Lions, the queen of Lazy Lions are donating a Lazy Lion. Crypto Chicks are going to donate something. If you don't know what these are, these are all NFT communities um, that have their own identities as well. We have Deadheads. Um, Nyla and the Long Neck Ladies, which is started by a 13-year-old girl who's going to talk in one of our Twitter spaces about how she at 13 uh, earned millions of dollars and became Time's first artist in residence. So there's just, I mean, there's so much potential here. And just look at all these amazing women on the screen. Um, you know, I think Web3, the face of Web3 is female. That's awesome. Uh, any final thoughts for you guys to end? and the session here, it's amazing. First of all, I'm so excited to, to have this conversation uh, and be included and be in, included in, into the group here. Thank you for having me. Um, closing thoughts on Women of Web 3, um, how people can get involved, uh, what you guys aspire to be, what are some of the goals, can take us through that. 
Um, I guess for me, uh, looking at, um, uh, you, you kind of asked the question of, you know, what we're most excited about with what's coming up with the um, International Women's Day and, and, you know, what's beyond that. I'm really excited about um, what Unstoppable are doing in introducing the gateway from Web 2 to Web 3, because that whole 24, the, the, the event that we have, co you know, coming on today um, is, you know, information, education, openness, how to use it but what's coming beyond there and is that transition from web two and how to, how do we even, like I'm about to learn that as well. And as I said, I've been in that, in this NFT journey for six months learning thus far, but what does it look like to get into a web three experience and the web page and that design and look and feel. So that next step of learning and getting into it. And again, anyone that's kind of uh, being involved in this conversation now, you'll be the first people stepping into that space as web three really comes to life. And it is the new web, very excited. Kristen? I couldn't agree more, Morel. What I think excites us the most is the level of interest and the level of engagement that we're seeing at unprecedented levels these days. And what's coming next is that you're going to see more and more women and more and more people as part of these communities, as we've talked about, wanting to learn, wanting to engage, and wanting to be part of this um, in numbers that we really haven't even seen still yet. We've just scratched the surface. And what I wanna ask everyone to do is not to wait, not to wait until you feel like you're behind. Take action now, go to our Cryptopedia page, open an account at Gemini, start to interact with cryptocurrencies, understand what it means to take you know, a crypto or a digital asset off of a platform and interact with some of these networks, understand what it means to own an NFT, look at unstoppable domains and understand how you can start to dip your toe in. Uh, we really want to empower everyone with the knowledge of what you can do here, and we couldn't be more excited about the future. Awesome. Sandy, final word? Yes. Uh, so I'm excited about a new world where um, diversity helps shape the next movement. You know, we've seen Web 1 and Web 2 shaped by, you know, homogeneous groups. And what I'm looking forward to is the future because we know that innovation is driven by diversity of thought. And so for me, I'm really excited about today, International Women's Day, where we're launching all these educational sessions. Um, you know, Kristen mentioned, don't wait, get involved. Uh, Disco, you know, talked a lot about the potential of going from web two to web three. We hope to see tons of women learning from the web two world. And then I just have to say, I mean, if we could get this across in the virtual world, we're then going to also host an in real life IRL event at South by Southwest. So I'm really excited to be back in person too, John, so that I can actually give my, uh, my fellow colleagues hugs as well. Yeah, I can't wait to be in person. Thank you so much for coming on. This is a great program. Today is International Women's Day, but every day is Women of Web 3 Day. Thanks for sharing great insight. I'm looking forward to more conversations and seeing what happens and participating in any way that I can. And thanks for having me and including me in, in the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is the Cube so Conversations here in the showcase, Women of Web3. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. <laughs>